Hi everybody, welcome to The Mountain Gamer. Today I am going to be showing you a full playthrough of my co-op version of Arctic Scavengers. Now, I love Arctic Scavengers and I started fiddling around with a solo version, a very simple solo version, just a set of rules with two dice. And I played with that a while and I liked it. But I got to thinking, could we automate something, you know, against which all of us could play? And that got me into a big rabbit hole and I ended up making a ton of custom cards, like an, basically an AI that had its own army, its own reinforcements, its own rules, new mechanisms where the AI can now wound you and you have to play like med cards to get rid of those wounds. So it's a whole thing um, and I'm just, I wanted to share it with you because I've been having a lot of fun. I had fun making it. And now I just want you guys to see how it plays. So let's get into it right now. All right, so here I have a game set up for a two-player co-op game. This here is the AI. So this is gonna be a 12 skirmish game plus three pre-skirmish rounds. So basically 15 rounds. Um, just like a regular game for the first three rounds, there will be no peaking. And at the start of the fourth round, we'll start to peak and start to skirmish and all that good stuff. When you set up the contested resource pile, you're going to put four, you know, this is, of, you know, cards of your choice, but four that have no population score and eight that have population. When you're setting this deck up, what you'll be doing is counting one, two, three, four and then you'll put the white card right there. There's a reason for that and we'll get to it as we play. I suggest playing with the farmers and the gearheads. Don't play with the other gangs, it's not gonna work out for this particular game. Next, every player will draw a random leader or a leader of your choice. In this case, I have the cannibal and the ranger. We'll get into those a bit later. As far as your starting decks, every player will have a deck that consists of a brawler, three scavengers, three refugees, a medic, a spear, and a shovel. You're going to set up your row of mercenaries for hire here. And in relation to that, you will need a die uh, with the same amount here. So like I've got 12 cards, I'm using a D12, so you will need that. Um, one quick note, you really should use the medic when playing against this guy here, because uh, there's some new actions that I will explain as we we start playing, but in essence, you're gonna get wounded, and you'll need the uh, the medic uh, the, the medical symbols to remove those wounds. So playing with medics is very very recommended. You will also need um, this is just a regular die that I've you know sharpied over. So what this die you know the faces on this die we've got one two three three and four and also this asterisk or explosion symbol. And that refers to this card here. I'm going to put this up on screen. This is going to, I'm, I'm going to get into that later, but this is what the AI is going to do on his turn. So for now, let's put that there. Um, next to the contested resource, or close to this anyway, you'll put a pile of wounds. This is a new mechanic, and I'll get into that. So two draw wounds, two dig wounds, two hunt wounds, and two hand wounds. That's bad stuff that we're gonna get thrown at us. And you'll put two extra hand wounds. Those will be for the AI. The AI will get his deck of uh, custom cards, put them here in his draw pile. He will also get his custom deck of reinforcements. Put that here. Next to this card here, you will put this card here. Um, that's the crappy version. I'll show you the nice, the nice one on screen. I just didn't have time to print it. But the AI is gonna be using this later on to block peaking at the contested resource. So just put that one there for now. When you're setting up the junk pile, you can put whatever you want in there, but I do suggest using all copies of meds and uh, med packs and pills and all that because you will be needing that. Also, when setting up, you will be putting the buildings pile here. Uh, you'll notice that I don't have the tinkerer or the engineer, but that's, I mean, you can use it if you want to, but whether you use it or not, or not uh, you will be getting a building like mid-game, so just put all the buildings there. 
Now, as I said before, there are some rules, but I'm not gonna go into that now. We'll do it as we run through this thing. All right, let's start the game. Now for the first three rounds, seeing as there's no skirmish, uh, we will be playing just like in the regular game, uh, buying, digging, and all that good stuff, hiring and digging. And when it comes to the AI's turn, uh, the AI will simply perform a dig two in the junk pile and then hire a mercenary. That's gonna be for the first three rounds. And after that, skirmish mode is gonna come in. So let's just start playing. I'm gonna draw my five cards here for the first player. Okay, and the second player also. Okay. So as the first player, one, two, three, four, I could hunt for four. I could dig for one, two, three, four as well. Um, I think that I'm going to hunt for three to get a medic. Yeah, hunt for three, one, two, three, and then probably dig for two. Now, one new action that I could do is called uh, request assistance. So that means I could ask a player that still has cards in hand, not cards set aside for the skirmish. If another player has some cards set uh, still in their hands, I could say, you know what, I would like you to help me. So they can give me one card that has a modifier. So a spear, a shovel, or even one of those scouting refugees, because they they all have modifiers. So I could say, you know what, I'm requesting assistance. And in that case, they would actually give me the card, I would add it to my hand, and I would own this now forever. And they would draw another card to replace the one that they gave me. So on your turn, you can do that once. You can say, I would like assistance, and another player can give you one card. If we were playing with, let's say, four players or three players, I can only request assistance once. So I would just, you know, announce it, you know, does anyone have a shovel that they could give me? And then one player would say, yes, I would take it, and that's it. I can't request assistance from everyone around the table at the same time and get four cards and all that. It's just once. So in this particular case, I'm not going to do this because I am satisfied with what I have, but now you know that you can do that. So let's stick with our original plan. So three food, I will buy a medic. And then I'm gonna dig for two. Okay, junk and shovel. Well, might as well keep the shovel. Put the junk back underneath here. And now we'll go to the left here, player number two. What do they have? Well, that's pretty bad. Almost forgot about this here. It says all of your refugees and tribe families have a hunt of one. So all of them. So that would be hunt, hunt, hunt. That's pretty good though. I could actually go three foods, one med. Three food, one med. That's a combination of four. I could get scrappers right away. So let's, yeah, why not? Let's do that. Three food, one med. Scrappers. Boom. Okay, that's good. I like that. Uh, let's just move that over here. Yeah, okay, well, this shovel serves no purpose. And now we're on to the AI's turn. So as I said before, on this particular card, it says on the first three turns, AI performs a dig of two. So he'll dig two cards. Now you don't look at these ever, and we'll put them over here in the junk digs. And that's gonna count uh, when we do end scoring. Now I didn't talk about this, but at the end, what we'll be doing is looking at everything the AI has hired, everything he's, you know, dug, and everything he's won. And we'll calculate the points, uh, population points, and we'll check for bonuses and all that. And then we will multiply his score by the number of players. In essence, if he's got 30 population, we'll do times two, that's 60. And then we might add a five if he got the farmers and a five if he got the gearheads. That's how we're gonna score. So. He did his dig of two and then he's gonna hire. Now to hire, you roll the d12 because there are 12 cards here. If you had 10, you'd roll a d10. So in this case of four, one, two, three, four. So he's gonna hire a medic. And that was his turn. We just finished one round. We'll move that to the left. So he's gonna be first player. Let's all draw our cards. One, two, three, four, five. And, hmm, what happened here? One, two, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to, 
When I was setting up, I made a mistake. I forgot to put in three scavengers in this starting deck. Sorry about that. I put them in here. I don't think it's going to break the game. We're back to normal. Okay. So on his turn, well, he's got a very heavy uh, food hand. He could request assistance, but I don't think he's going to. Although I do have an extra shovel. So he could say, you know what? I'm going to do... Well, I mean, four food is overkill, right? Yeah, it's probably too much. Or he could really dig like a crazy... Look, let's just do it because. So he'll say, I am requesting assistance. I need a shovel. Okay, fine. Shovel. And then this player here has to draw back up to um, replace the card that he's just given. So let's do that. Okay. So in this case, he could dig for one, two, three, four. Let's do that. One, two, three, four. And <laughs> we got two shovels, junk, and a map. Now, I like me some maps, so I'm going to get that. So that was the digging part. And now here we can do one, two, three, three foods. Um, I guess we'll hire another medic later on in the game. The AI will give us wounds. I didn't get into that, um, how that works, but you'll be using this, these med symbols to get rid of those wounds. So I want to stock up on that early in the game. Uh, so that was this player's turn. Now it goes to the AI. So again, we're in the first three rounds. So he's going to dig for two, one, two, and higher. That's a nine. So that's six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, uh, you see? He's just made two points. Well, times two at the end of the game. So we got to get our uh, shirt together. And now it's the cannibal's turn. Now the cannibal, each round, may cannibalize one tribe member for three food. We could do three food, one meds, or four, four food, one meds. Why would we do four food, one med? I don't know. Okay, so let's do then three food, one med to get scrappers because they are worth two victory points at the end of the game. So that would be that. And then our refugees serve no purpose and we could dig for one. So let's do that. Oh, look, Ma, another shovel. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the shoveling here. Okay, and let's move to the third round. So he's going to be first. He will dig of two or dig for two. He will hire. Eleven. Man, he's getting some lucky rolls. That's another two or four victory points. To the left, it's going to be us, the cannibal. One, two, three, four, five. The ranger as well, because we might request assistance. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so um, we cannot request assistance because they have nothing with modifiers. So that's too bad. But, 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 uh, okay. Let's, uh, let's make the best of this. So what do we have here? We got two foods, three foods. I can dig a lot. You know, I think I'm going to hire myself a brawler because I'm going to need to eventually. So, two food, brawler. And then, I mean, we could dig for three and draw for one just to cycle the deck faster. Yeah, why not? So let's draw for one to cycle our deck. Ah, should have done that before. Well, live and learn. Um, so he's basically useless now because I can't draw again. I did that and I can't hire again because I did that. So bye-bye. So we'll dig for three. Pickaxe, net, and pills. Well, I'm going to keep the pills and discard the rest. So his turn is over. Let's go to this player here, the ranger. Refugees and tribe families have a hunt of one. So we could potentially do... One hunt, one med. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud here. I'm going to start digging. Now, with the scrappers, when you dig, you can pull from the top or the bottom of the pile. But I know what's at the bottom. I've seen, like, it's a pickaxe and a net. So I'm going to go for the top. So I'll dig for three. Oh, wow. Med kit, med kit, junk. I'll keep the junk. No, I'll keep the med kit. Put that there. And now I can put this back on top or back on the bottom, but I don't want to put it back on top because if the AI digs, I don't want him to get that. So I'll put it way at the bottom, like this one at the bottom, completely. Digging is done. So look, I'll just do one uh, meds here to get me a hunter. 
Although I can make food pretty easily. So I'll probably, let's let's get a provocateur. Yeah, mix things up a bit. So that would be, that'd be that. We don't have a skirmish. So that's the end of the third round. So now he'll be the first player and now there will be a skirmish. So let's just shuffle here. I'll fast forward here. Okay, so let's draw our hands. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. We have refugee, brawler, scavenger, scrapper, shovel, and then one. This has been shoveled, so it's gonna become my draw pile. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and because we are the first player, we can peek at the contested resource. Okay, it's a cargo sled. It's not, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it isn't worth any victory points. So let's leave it face up so we know what we're fighting for. Now, my instinct would be to try and hire something or some, some people that have higher population values instead of fighting for the cargo sled. That being said, in this version of the game, if you win the skirmish by two or more of fight value, so if you beat the AI by two or more, you get to wound the AI's hand. Now what this means is um, when he's you know, getting his cards for the skirmish, he's gonna have one less card. And if we can do that again in the game, we can wound him again. So then two less cards. Now, this is a big deal. This is very important because when he gets to five or six cards, he can kick your butt. So reducing his hand size is something that you want to do. Now, am I going to do that? I don't know. Let me check my options here. I think what I'll do first, I'm going to try and at least hire a little something for, for everyone and then probably try, probably try to fight him. So firstly, I'm going to draw. Ah, I was hoping for meds and that's good. I'm going to cannibalize a refugee and I just remembered that I did cannibalize a refugee earlier on with the cannibal so let me remove one from the game whomp, whomp. shuffle that okay so I've cannibalized a refugee for uh, three food but I'll use that to get myself a brawler for two food um, I'm gonna keep this guy around because he can save tribe members from a snipe I'm going to equip the shovel to the scrapper and I'm going to request the shovel from this, from the ranger to equip it here. And then he can draw another card. Ooh, okay, this might change the plans. Okay, so I'm going to set all of this aside as my cards for the skirmish. So if we go to the left, then it would be the ranger's turn. Okay, I've been thinking about this and what I'm going to do is use my two meds here to buy myself an assassin. So I'll buy that with my meds. Um, and then I'm going to send out my scavenger with a shovel to hire to, to dig. Oh, okay, it's another map. And then because I'm carrying the map, scavenger comes back, discard the map. So this is what I have for my fight. And now it's his turn. So what you'll do on the AI's turn at the fourth round and every subsequent round is roll the action die. And the result you get, you will, uh, you know, you'll activate what it says here on the card. So let's roll that first. Okay, it's a four. So on a four, the AI will draw six cards and hire one. So let's draw his six cards. We'll put them face down here. And then he'll hire for one. It's cocked, but that's an eight. So six, seven, eight, that's a scout. Okay. And now what you're gonna do is reveal the AI's cards one by one and you activate them. So this is a bit different than how you, how your guys work. Like if I had a sniper in my ranks here, I could activate him only when it comes to my turn in the skirmish. If I'm the first player in the skirmish, I can activate my snipers, and then the second player can activate their snipers. The AI doesn't work that way. If you reveal something that says, snipe a tribe member, he will automatically snipe your tribe member. 
and he will always focus on the person who is the first player, so the person who's got the token. Now, if ever the AI has the token, he'll focus on the person to the left of the AI. So let's do this, you know, one card at a time. Firstly, lookouts. We have an attack of two and two population, and it'll say gain reinforcement activates after skirmish. So you don't act activate this now, the reinforcements thing. Only if this card is still alive at the end of the skirmish will you activate this. So for now, it doesn't really matter. It's an attack of two. I mean, he's going to win this fight. Let's not kid ourselves. We don't have a lot of fight, but, you know, let's see what happens. Long range shooter, an attack of three, and he wounds hand. Okay. So he'll target the first player, which is the cannibal, and he will wound our hand. So you reach over to the wounds over here and you grab this and you put it next to the cannibal now what this is going to do is during your turn uh, the cannibal will not have a hand of five cards to play with he will only have four and to get rid of this wound he or anyone around the table on their own turn can play a meds symbol to get rid of that so the cannibal on his turn can play let's say a medic or pills and it would discard this. Or on the ranger's turn, if they have a meds, uh, any med symbol, they can just play it and it'll get rid of the other player's wound. So for now, the cannibal has a wounded hand. Let's keep going with the AI. Another lookouts, okay. This one is a bit different. It has to attack and activates after skirmish, blocks peeking at contested resource. What this does is, now this is, as I said, the crappy version of the card. I'll show you the the nice one on screen. Um, if this activates, this is going to go on top of the contested resource pile. And what it does is, when it's your turn, any player's turn, they cannot peek at the contested resource like you usually do at the beginning of a round. The only way you'll be able to look at a contested resource would be to play somebody like the Spy or a card like the Binoculars with an actual like spying action. Either that, or on your turn, you can waste some fight value, which is something you couldn't do usually, but so during your the, the hiring phase, you can now spend attacks to get rid of that. So what this says on the card here is if we're playing with two players, you need to spend two attacks. So this is kind of a bummer, because you don't want to be wasting you know fight values just to start peeking at cards. So essentially what's gonna happen, happen during the game is it's gonna be very hard to know what you're fighting for. Now, if you don't like this rule, I mean, you can take it out, I guess, and just ignore what it says at the bottom here, but I find that it makes for a more challenging game. So let's keep going here. Oh, the slacker. I love me the slacker. You see, he's just sitting down. He's not doing anything. He's a slacker. You're a slacker, Jerry, a slacker. So one attack, that's good. What else? A field medic. Okay, one attack, and he saves the highest card from a snipe action. So when it gets to let's say this player's turn and he's got a sniper if he tries to snipe a card this one would say nah -uh. he would just block it kind of like what a medic does and lastly this should not be here sorry about that this is actually a reinforcement card and you can tell by these little logos here so that's a mistake on my part i'll just put this back in the reinforcements deck and we'll get him another card here and it is the advance party three Okay, so let's see what he's got for fights. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's horrible because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I've calculated the score with the ranger and the cannibal combined. I mean, we, we're, we're losing this thing and we don't have a sniper. We don't have anything. So hands down, he's going to pick up that cargo sled. So this is his. So we'll put that face down in the box here that says contested resource wins. Now you might be thinking, uh, how are we ever gonna beat this guy? Well, we rolled a four, okay? Draw six cards. Yes, it's horrible. You're not gonna get this every turn. You're gonna get you know, a one, a two, a three, a four. You're gonna get a star. So we just got a very bad roll. And as I said before, if we had actually wounded him throughout the game, he, it could have been draw six cards, but minus two. So four cards, making it a bit easier 
for us to win this thing. So let's uh, keep playing. So all of this stuff, well, hold on. He's, he had some stuff that activated after skirmish. So gain one reinforcement. What that does is you take a reinforcement from the pile and you put it in his discard. Now reinforcements are just like these cards, but, but a little buffed up with a bit of special, uh, special effects. So for now it goes in his discard and when he cycles, this might come back to kick you in the face. Um, and what else? We had block peaking activates after skirmish. So we'll put that on top of the contested resources. And that was that. Yeah, save a highest card from a snipe action. So this is all done. We'll put that in his discard and the round is over. So we'll just clean up here, clean up. So now see, because it's our turn, uh, the player's human's turn, we could usually look at the contested resource, but now we can't because this thing is on there. So let's get our cards, see what we got. Now this player only gets four cards because he's got a wounded hand. Now, as I've said before, uh, let's say this player could play uh, this one value med here to get rid of that wound. If the cannibal had two wounds, you could play two of, uh, of the meds to get rid of two wounds. So for each value of meds that you have here, you can get rid of one wound. Okay, I've thought about this. So first I'm gonna be playing the medic to get rid of this wound right here. We'll put it up top. Um, next, next I'm going to I'm going to be playing the ranger's uh, power here to have a hunt of one. Oh, no, 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 I'm going to request, sorry. So I'm requesting a spear. He's going to be drawing back up. Now, I should note that if the hand wound was still here, um, it doesn't uh, stop you from getting more cards during your turn. It's really just all about your starting hand. So that's cleared up. Uh, okay, so this player here is going to do one, two, so two foods, because this is worth one. So two food, one med, to hire a scout. So I do like the scout's uh, draw ability. Let's get that. Now I could go crazy and dig, but you know what? I think I'm going to try to fight a little bit. Yeah, I think so. So let's keep it like that for now. Then again, my plans might change because now it's gonna be the AI's turn. Now, if he's got a buttload of cards here, I might not decide to fight, but if he's got just a few cards, maybe. So let's see what he's gonna do. So first we roll the action die. Okay, it's a two, that's better. So two says draw four cards. Okay, so let's get him his four cards. So that gives me an idea of what he might have as far as a fight score. And then it says dig one junk and hire one. So he's gonna dig one junk and hire one card. 11, that's extremely lucky for him because that's two points or four. Then it goes to the cannibal's turn. So could we win this? Let's just look at what we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If this is two per card, that's eight. So, ugh, I don't know, probably not. And I know what the cards are in there. Like we saw the slacker come out. That's one of those cards that, you know, it's just one attack and it does nothing special. There's just one in the whole deck. So I'm not feeling too good about this whole situation here. Look, we'll try it just for fun. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, kill uh, one of these guys with my cannibal. And that'll be for three. And I might go get a medic this time. So this is for the skirmish. So let's see what's going to happen. First player is the ranger. So he'll be targeted by the AI's uh, nastiness, if ever. Outpost scout. That's one fight value. Gains a reinforcement after the skirmish. A rescue team. Two attacks. And he would heal one wound. So you see if his hand would have been wounded uh, with these things here this would automatically remove that wound. So yes, you will wound the AI, but he will heal himself throughout the game. Next, <laughs> the Blizzard Trooper, four attack. Yeah, that's, we're not gonna win that. And then the Bushwhacker, uh, two attacks and automatically disarms one tool. So in this case, he would focus on the person who is the first player, he would disarm their tool. If ever this person didn't have a tool, you would 
switch to the next player and disarm, you always disarm the tool with the highest attack value. So he's going to disarm this. And what do we have now as far as attack? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he definitely wins this. Um, he beats us. He gets the contested resource for sure. So we're going to go get that. We won't look at what it is because it's secret. And we'll put it down in his contested resource wins. And let's clean up. Let's draw some cards. Shovel, medic, pills. Shuffle all of this really quick. Another medic and a brawler. Okay, it's a very medical hand. And let's see what he's got. Brawler, spear, provocateur, scavenger. Scavenger, okay. Let's see what the AI is gonna do. So the action die. Oh, <laughs> that's just perfect. Okay, so what happens on a one? If you check the card here, on one it says draw three cards. That's good, that gives us a fighting chance. One, two, three, okay. And then it says gain reinforcement with a little asterisk. And at the bottom it says gain to top of draw pile. So his reinforcement is gonna go a lot quicker into the game. And then higher one. So let's roll that. Three, that's a brawler. Okay. I, if I equip this to the brawler, I mean requesting stuff doesn't really serve any purpose because I can't request anything that does any hunting because nobody can hold it. And I can't request really the fight, you know, the fight value because I can't hook it up to the brawler. He's already got a shovel. Um, unless I swap one for the other. I could do that. But you know... Okay. I'm going to be doing two med symbols here to get myself an assassin. Then I'm going to be drawing one card aha scavenger so now i will request that spear this makes our attack value a bit better let's put that aside for the skirmish so what's the ranger gonna do i mean i think we should go all in and fight like we still don't know what we're fighting for because we can't look at that unless we start wasting like i could waste two attacks right now to just look at that but you know what let's just fight because in the best case scenario, I want to beat him, win the contested resource, and if I beat him by two or more, I want to wound his hand. So let's try and do that. So if we look at everything we've got here, that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I mean, worst case scenario, three, 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 that'd be nine. Or four, three, three, that'd be ten. I think we're good, but you know what? I'm <laughs> I like to try and hire on every player's turn because, as I said, he takes population and he multiplies by two, so that can ramp up pretty fast. So I will use I will use a scavenger to hunt for one to at least get something. And you know what? I'll get myself a scouting refugee because uh, they have modifiers. Therefore, we can swap them between players when you request for assistance. So yeah, let's fight. Let's do this. All right, drum roll, please. He's got a Scarecrow Decoy. I forgot about that guy. That's beautiful. There's just one of those in the whole game, so enjoy it. <laughs> He's got a Rescue Team. Heal one wound. Perfect. He doesn't have a wound to heal, so that's kind of wasted. And Lookouts. Two attacks, block peeking at the end of the skirmish, but that's already active. So hey, look at that. He's got four. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We beat him hands down. So first, let's get the contested resource. What was it? <gasps> nice, tribe family. Now, um, we usually give this to whoever wants it. I mean, we, we won this as a group, so you could decide, oh, give me those, I'll deal with them. Or, or you could decide to give it to the, you know, the first player. But you know what? I'll give it to the ranger because their tribe families can, uh, can hunt. So that, we did beat him by two, so we will be wounding his hand. So we'll put that there to remind us. The cleanup has been made. I'm going to move this over to the AI. All 
we're going to be drawing our cards. The cannibal has a brawler, a scavenger, a shovel, scrappers, and another brawler. Okay. The ranger has a med kit, a scout, a medic, a useless refugee, and another medic. Okay. But it is his turn, so now he's going to roll the action die. Let's do that. Aha! Now if you check the card, this is the asterisk or the star or whatever. Uh, here it says, heal all wounds. Wap wap. Okay, too bad. So he's going to heal that. So we did that for nothing. Horrible. He's going to next draw two cards. Well, at least it's only two. And then roll for damage. So you flip this card over. So you roll the action die again, which is now called the damage die. I just rolled that and I got a three. It says all players discard one tribe member card. Oh, that is horrible, horrible. Okay, so let's think about that. What do we want to discard? I think I have a lot of medics, so I'll probably discard a medic. Yeah, I'm gonna discard a medic. I think we'll try to fight, so I'll probably discard the person with the lowest fight score. So a scavenger. Okay, thanks AI. All right, then it goes to my turn for real here, the cannibal. Let's say we try to fight. These two brawlers is four. The shovel would be five. Now do I go five, six, seven? With this, nine. Or do I try to dig? I don't, you know what? I think he's gonna be my fighting guy and he's gonna be my recruiting, yeah. Okay, let's do that. So let's say I keep this for the fight, and then we go to the ranger. The ranger here, I could do a draw for two, maybe get something better. Because right now the best I can do would be one, two, three, and then convert this to a food for a total of four to go get some scrappers, which are worth two victory points. Could do that. So yeah, you know what, let's try that and I might play this just to see if I can get more to instead get thugs. So I'll play her. So that's a draw of two. Put her there. Draw for two. Oh, that might actually work. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ka-ching! Okay, I, I like that. I like that plan. So at least we got three victory points for sure. And I mean, these thugs are going to fight hard later in the game. So let's put that in the discard. And now let's fight. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six against whatever he's got. Let's put those over here. He's got, aha, one of those reinforcement cards. A Blizzard Trooper, five attack. Wow, did not expect that. And you know what? I should have expected that because we had that turn where the reinforcement went right on top of the draw pile. So I should have thought, yeah. Okay, well, live and learn. Five and seven. Damn it. And automatically snipe one tribe member. Now if I had a medic here, I could have blocked that, but I don't. So he's gonna snipe the person with the highest attack value. In this case, they're all the same. So let's snipe the brawler, I guess. So seven, one, two, three, four, five. He wins. He gets the thing. Good for you, AI. We won't look at what this is, of course, and we'll put it in the wins. And that's the end of that round, so let's clean up. Now let's move this over to the cannibal, and we will draw our hands. Okay, scavenger shovel, scavenger shovel, medic. And this gentleman here, or lady, lady ranger. Lady ranger. Uh, okay, you see this white card here. This signifies that we are beginning the fifth skirmish. Now what this does is, and this is an optional rule, you do not have to play with this if you don't like it, but we like it, and that's why it's in there. You throw this aside, what this says is, every human player now gets a pre-built building. Each player draws three buildings and keeps one. It just helps to balance out the game, you know, but then again, the game is pretty random, there is dice rolling, there's card shuffling and all that, so like I said, if you like it, do it, if you don't, don't. But I like it, and I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to go check out the buildings. So let's say the cannibal here. Hydroponics garden, which makes food. The pharmacy, which stores medicine. And another pharmacy. So I might actually keep the pharmacy. 
Now, if you want to, everybody can do this at once and you can discuss, oh, I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna keep that, you know, have like a group think. It helps, I find. Two hydroponic gardens and a bunker. Now, because this person gives my refugees and families a hunt of one, I don't think I should be getting that. Although, what's good is, when you have this, basically every turn, you're guaranteed to hire somebody because you're always making one food and these don't require any mercenaries to be with them. So you just make a food, get a guy. So you know what? I think I'm gonna do this. I know it seems counterintuitive, but I do like the fact of recruiting someone without having to waste cards. So yeah, I'll just put that over here. Okay, so what are we doing? We can dig, we can fight, we can dance if we want to. Okay, I will use the meds to hire a hunter. And then I will be digging for three. Let's see what we get. One, two, three. Oh, wow, okay. Spear, not so much. Binoculars are pretty cool because we can peek at the top card from all piles in place. So essentially, when this comes out, I could just use it to look at the contested resource instead of wasting two attack. I uh, think I'm gonna go with the binoculars. Let's move on to the AI. So let's roll the action die. Three, so on a three, you would draw five cards, dig two in the junk and hire. That's pretty good for him. So five cards. We'll shuffle his discard here, five. Okay, all right, I have, uh, you know, rewound this thing a little bit because I realized I made a mistake. These two cards should not be here because I did do a dig of three. So these cards go back here. And actually, before I move on to the AI's turn, I'm going to use two attacks here to get rid of this thing here. So that way we can see what we're fighting for. Now, I know that on this turn, we're probably not gonna fight just because he's got so many cards, but at least maybe for future turns, who knows? So, you know, instead of wasting these attacks on a fight I'm not gonna win, I'm gonna waste these two attacks on getting rid of the, the blocking thing here. So what are we fighting for? Oh, damn it, it's a tribal family for five. Well, all right. So now it's the AI's turn. Now you did, you guys didn't see this, but I made him dig for two and he hired actually a brawler. Okay, now we'll move on to the ranger's turn. So what can the ranger do? Let's hire a brawler with two foods. So one plus one, uh, brawler. And then let's, um, let's draw with the map. So he'll come back and we got a provocateur, okay. And then let's, I mean, we're not gonna win, so let's dig for two and see what we get. What do we get? A toolkit increases a tribe member's build by two. We're not playing with buildings, but still, it's still a dig of two. And then the multi-tool, which is, well, a multi-tool. It's good for everything. So let's keep the multi-tool. Let's discard, okay. So, I mean, let's fight, but obviously he's just gonna whip us to death. Bushwhacker, disarm a tool. We don't have that. Two attacks. An archer. This is a reinforcement card. So this says two attacks and it's wound dig and wound hunt. And it will target the player who was the initiator, so the cannibal. So then we go up here and we're gonna retrieve a wound of dig and a wound of hunt, so dig and hunt. So what this means now is my cannibal over here cannot perform any hunting and cannot perform any digging, which is awful. And the only way to get rid of those is to play med symbols. So we'll put these close to my cannibal here. Sorry, they're off screen, but there you go. Okay, let's continue. Wound draw, wow. So that's gonna also block the drawing action for my cannibal. That's looking pretty bad for my cannibal right now. Okay, what else? Three attacks <laughs> and five attack. All right, so we are getting our butts destroyed. 
All right. Um, so, yeah, we lose. We lose that hands down. Okay, so the AI wins this tribe family. And we are wounded like crazy. So let's clean up and go back up top. We'll move this over to the ranger and let's draw some cards. So my ranger has brawler, assassin, thank god. Shovel, a map. And a refugee. Let's put this like this. My cannibal has... Well, he still has five cards. That's good. So Brawler, Spear, Medic, Brawler, and Scrappers. Now, as I've said before, my guy here cannot dig, cannot hunt, cannot draw. So we're going to have to heal him or else he's pretty much useless. But let's start with our Ranger here. Uh, the Ranger has no meds. The Ranger could ask for assistance. Now, why would he do that? Well, maybe just to give this guy more options. Because if he asked for assistance, the spear would come over here. This player would draw another card. Now, I hear you saying, Whoa there, Steve, you said he can't draw. Correction, he cannot take the draw action. Those symbols here. He can replenish because he gave a card to someone else. Not the same thing. So, let's think about this for a little bit. Now, before we start doing anything, we should actually check what we're fighting for, because we got rid of this thing, so it's our turn. We can see what we're fighting for. Okay, it's a sled team. That's worth two points. So, okay, let's think about this. All right, I have decided to try and win this thing. Not because that's so awesome, but just because I have 11 fight value here, and I'm thinking if I win it and I can beat him by two, we can wound him which uh, is always a good thing. So firstly, the ranger will ask for assistance. So the spear will be coming over here because my plan is to... Oh, no, that's not even good. Well, let's do it anyways. Let's do it anyways. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So if I'm, I'm looking at the two hands at the same time, so at least with this, we can get rid of two of those wounds. So... I'm going to keep the sniper for the fight, for sure. I'm going to keep the brawler with the spear. The refugee is kind of useless right now, but I could send them to do a dig for two with the map, so he'll come back. So let's dig for two. Binoculars and pills. I think pills. So let's get rid of that. Now that that's done, well, the map goes away, the shovel goes away, but he, but my refugee comes back. And with the hydroponic garden, I will produce a food to go get a free... I'm going to get a scouting refugee here. Okay, 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 not too bad. So basically, this is what I have for my fight. An assassin, a useless refugee, and a fight value of four. So let's see what the AI does. Let's roll the action die. It's a three, which is uh, not super. Three is five cards. That's pretty, that's pretty bad. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And then he would dig for two in the junk pile. And he would hire one. Let's roll. He hires a six. Six would be a provocateur. And let's move on to us. Okay, so if he's got five cards, let's say it's, I don't know, two, 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 three, three. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ugh. I don't know, Timmy. Timmy! I don't know. Well, let's use the medic and the pills. Well, you know what? You We can keep the medic just in case he's got a sniper. We can use the pills to get rid of that i think that's you know that's what you can hire with this so let's actually get rid of that yeah getting rid of the hunting wound with my pills keeping that in case we snipe in case he snipes and then maybe we keep all this to fight and we just really really hope for the best i think i mean we'll see okay let's do this bushwhackers bushwhacker 
Uh, snipe one tribe member. He's going to target the player who's got the chip here. Um, he would snipe the, uh, the tribe member with the highest attack value. So he's going to snipe the brawler, making this spear useless. Although, we have a medic in the other player's hand. Saves one tribe member from the effects of a snipe. Now, because we're playing co-op, he can actually save my brawler. So you know what? Let's do that. So let's keep the brawler. Good, 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 good. Let's keep going. A fighting medic saves the highest card from a snipe action. Okay, we'll see about that later. Scarecrow decoy. Pretty good, pretty good. We're at four. That's nice. Five, the slacker. Oh, we might actually win this. And the lookouts, two, and we'll block peeking later. Okay, okay. Let's move on to the, the ranger here. He can snipe a single unit tribe member. So let's snipe... Uh... Ah, you see? So I could snipe this guy. He's a single unit, but he would save the highest card from a snipe action. So, hmm. So if he saves this card here, well, then we can snipe somebody else. We can snipe a single unit tribe member, single unit, this one. So he's been sniped. Okay. And then our other player, uh, the cannibal, doesn't have anything special. So let's, let's resolve. So he's got one, two, three, four, five, six. We have one, two, three, four. And in our other hand, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we win this thing and we beat him by more than two. So he gets wounded. Beautiful. Our plan worked out nicely. Okay. He will block peeking at the end of the skirmish. Let's not forget that. So in order, let's do this. We're going to get the contested resource. Let's give this thing to the cannibal just for fun. Uh, then the AI blocks peeking at the end of the skirmish. So we'll put that thing on the contested resource pile. Let's not forget to actually wound the AI because we beat him by more than two. So we'll put that there. And I'm going to end it here, actually. Um, I'll keep playing. If you want to see the rest of this playthrough, the link is down below. If you want to see who wins the game and also get some of my comments about this whole thing, check it out in the other video. And with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.